Once you've downloaded the welded studs installer, you'll run through the installation and make sure it's pointing to the correct data directory. The first example that I'm going to do is just add it to the top flange of this beam. So I'll go ahead and add in my welded studs. And I can change the stud type. We do have a shear stud or a threaded stud. If I have a threaded stud, I can add in a nut or a washer. But for this example, I'll just have a shear stud. And then the position when this is a beam, it'll be that I can add it to the top flange, the bottom flange, the near side or far side. And then the pattern settings, I can do fixed or equal. I'll do fixed for this one. I'll do my stud spacing at two feet and my left distance setting to fixed for my right and my left. Now that I have that set to fix, then my pat pattern underrun I'll leave at my left end and then I have my weld settings. So you see my left end, I have my pattern underrun and maybe I want to change my right end now to be the underrun. And then I can change it to both as well, just to show that example. So I'll go ahead and change my pattern settings to equal and I will change my stud column. It can be one or two. I'll change it for two for now. And maybe my end settings for my left distance and my right distance I'll change to a minimum. And I'll leave the pattern right now for normal. I can come back in and for my stud column pattern, I can change this to staggered. So we'll start staggering in the back first. Or I can do a reverse stagger and then it will start staggering in the front. Now let's say maybe I want to add, we'll change this back to one, and then I'm going to change this to my near side web. When I have it set to one, it will put it at half the nominal depth. So this is a W18 beam. So it did put it right at nine inches. But maybe I want it to be my half the actual depth. There is a request for that, but right now, I'm just going to put in a half just so you see that it moves. You can put in a column offset and you'll see that it moved down a half inch. I'll just go ahead and move this back up to my top flange for later on. I can also add these to a column. So here's a shear stud to a column and it can even be to like a sloped column. So maybe I want to add it to the flange of the slope column. And I'll go ahead and change this to a threaded stud and add in a nut and a washer. And I'll leave this at my face C so you see that the position now changes for a column face A, B, C, and D. Now if I wanted different spacing on either end, I would want to run this component twice. So maybe my left end I want to be 18 inches and my right end I want it to be 24 inch spacing. Now taking a look at this detail, you will want to detail with templates. 
And while that's running through, I will go ahead and add in a top flange view for this beam that has the welded studs on it. And I'll go ahead and detail this as well. So now you can see that my welded studs are on here. I have the weld called out. I also have the spacing. So it's saying 17 at two foot. And then we have my beam as well. We have my spacing. And then you'll see that the top view is now added as well. The last thing to cover is that there are settings for these defaults. If I go into my project settings, my plugin defaults and component, 